Okay, so good morning once again everyone and thank you for joining. So today we will be discussing the different strategies in outsourcing. Ano? This is uh, the second part of our um, module 2. So by next meeting, we will be able to finish module 2. Tapos we will proceed to module 3. No? So hopefully ma-meet na natin yun before we reach the midterm. So today we are going to talk about the different strategies in outsourcing. And I have given this to you as an assignment, no? if you would recall. Yeah, uh, just like what I have shown you earlier, no, you were able to define the different uh, strategies being used in outsourcing. But now let's look at them one by one and see the examples. No? So um, multi-sourcing, now from the term itself, multi, multiple, no, there are multiple vendors for clients outsourced projects. So uh, we are outsourcing as a uh, an, uh, a project, no, let's say call center. And then yung call center natin, we don't have just one partner. If you would recall last time, diba, we have the third party no, type of outsourcing. And then sa third party, okay, sila yung types of call centers that serve multiple clients. No? Now ngayon, let's look at it at the side of the client. No, ako yung may-ari ng business and then I am hiring different third-party uh, companies. In essence, what I am doing is I am multi-sourcing, meaning I am outsourcing my business to different third-party companies. Okay, so let me explain that further. No? By showing you this example, um, we have GM's Brazilian e-commerce site. So General Motors, no? And they have outsourced their project to many companies, no? Third-party companies. They are outsourcing contracts with EDS, now known as HP Enterprise, IBM, Capgemini, Wipro, so on and so forth. No? So that was in 2007. So... GM, no, General Motors, marami silang pinag-outsourcean ng kanilang services. No? Kung baga, hindi sila nagre-rely in one third-party outsourcing. In the perspective of a, bit, uh, a business, this is good. Ano? Kasi hindi ka reliant in, let's say, one supplier. No? For example, itong supplier Amo, nagkaroon ng abiria, nasira yung truck nila, or nagkaroon sila ng problem with their operations, does that mean ikaw, hindi ka na rin makaka-start ng operations mo? Kunwari, you are running SM, no? SM tungko. Tapos, you need supplies for your grocery, no? SM supermarket. Tapos, nagre-rely ka lang sa isang supplier ng sugar, no? That, that is a basic commodity. Marami bumibili niyan. O di kaya, rice. Marami din bumibili niyan. If isa lang yung supplier mo, tapos hindi sila nakapag-deliver, what's going to happen? No, That's going to be problematic because um, it would spell no rice or no sugar for your uh, supermarket and magagalit yung customers mo. No, no, no. So what they are doing is they are multi-sourcing. They are relying from different suppliers. No? Different uh, in our... Um, discussion, different outsourcing companies. So, ganun din ang ginawa ng GM. Ano? It has awarded billions of dollars worth of IT outsourcing contracts uh, to many companies. Ano? So, this is an old article ano, kaya last week in the Kalagay. But this is uh, sometime in 2017. Ano? GM began parceling out what would amount to almost 15 billion worth of IT work over the next five years, picking six vendors. So, merong anim na vendors. At yung anim na, ben na vendors na yon sila ay naglalaban-laban <laughs> um, for the satisfaction of GM. So, nabanggit natin yan kanina, di, di ba? May uh, EDS, HP, IBM, Wipro, Covisint. So, yan yung mga IT suppliers nila, IT vendors nila. No? Kung baga lahat ng IT work ng General Motors ay 
in-outsource nila sa mga companies na to. So they are competing with one another. No, for example, si IBM ang pinakamagandang outsourcing partner nila. So that's that would mean more business. No, bibigyan siya ng mas maraming business kung bares si HP. Siya yung kulelat. Ang gagawin ni GM, okay HP, dahil hindi gan kaganda yung performance mo. Babawasan ko mo na yung business sa iyo by fifty percent, and then internally ang gagawin namin, ililipat namin yun sa IBM kasi si IBM yung consistent na magandang performance. Now, that's just an example. Okay? So, what is the advantage of um, having a multi-sourcing strategy sa tingin ninyo? Kung ikaw yung business owner, ano ba ang um, advantage para sa iyo kung ikaw ay merong multi-sourcing strategy? Maganda siya, di ba? Kasi secured yung iyong business operations ano? at saka alam mo na um, hindi ka magkakaroon ng aberya. Wala tayong magiging problem dahil marami yung ano mo eh, marami yung partners mo and lahat sila, they have to compete with one another, di ba? May kasabihan nga tayo, no? Uh, with competition, it keeps everyone's toes up. No. Ibig sabihin, lahat kayo on the lookout, lahat kayo nakabantay, baka matalo kayo eh. No? Pag natalo tayo, nakaka bukod sa nakakahiya, mawawalan tayo ng business. No? Yan. So, yan ang kagandahan ng multi-sourcing. Ano? Maganda siya for the side of the, um, the company no, with multiple vendors kasi sigurado ka na hindi ka mawawalan ng supply or hindi ka mawawalan ng partner dahil madami sila eh no at any time you can transfer no or allocate easily between these partners okay so yan yung multi sourcing natin example next we have crowdsourcing no i'm sure most of you are familiar with crowdsourcing Diba nga, pag uh, meron kayong gustong malaman, let's say, hindi nyo makita yung sagot sa Google, no? what you do is, you post it in uh, Facebook, tapos sinasabi nyo, crowdsourcing, meron po bang nagre-repair ng ganito, ganyan, dito sa San Jose? So, when you say crowdsourcing, you are asking for the help of the crowd. Okay? You are um, checking if the crowd can help you No, with um, a specific um, activity, okay. So maganda ang crowdsourcing, ano? Because uh, when you post, put up a uh, crowdsourcing, you are asking for the help of many experts or people. Now, the company puts out a call for a project, no? so you have a project, and the best solution submission is accepted and contracted. So Kagaya niyan, when you post for crowdsourcing, marami ang sasagot dyan, pero yung pinakamagandang answer is what you would select. Tama ba? So, nagpa-crowdsourcing ka, kung sino yung pinakamagandang answer or most feasible um, suggestion for you, yun yung kukunin mo. Crowdsourcing to an, an undefined, generally large group of potential offerers in the form of an open call. So yan, ano, sa, sa government, ganun din ginagawa. Meron kaming tinatawag na bidding. No? Minsan naririnig nyo sa news yan, ano? kagaya ng issue ngayon, yun, formally. Bakit sila yung kinunga? Eh, meron naman daw palang equivalently good local manufacturer. Di ba? So that's just an example. No? And everyone can participate. No? It's an open call. It's open for everyone. Okay? And maraming businesses have used crowdsourcing ever since no? as their means to improve their business asking ideas from people. Okay? Um, ito, no? We all know Coca-Cola and how uh, good Coca-Cola is. Let me try to check if I could share this with you. Baka hindi nyo lang marinig yung audio, no? but maybe we could see the video. Um, this is Valentine's Love in the Air. So let me show you the video. 
for mabilis lang naman to eh, no? it's less than the, less than a minute so let me go back to my uh, slide okay so coca cola used their crowdsourcing uh, the crowdsourcing strategy no to film and do their valentines ad okay they have not asked for the opinion of people, but um, what they did is an, uh, parang so, this is a form of a social experiment. You know, that the title is Love is in the Air. Happiness is in the Air. So, literally, what they did is tinali nila yung Coca-Cola in a uh, set of balloons. You know? And then meron silang mga nakaredy na filmmakers na naka, uh, nakakalat, ano, um, taking videos no of people getting the the coca-cola from the balloons so this is a very good uh, concept no by coke every every time a coca-cola does a marketing uh, uh, strategy or experiment it is always no done very good meron lang silang ilang uh, failures like the new coke in the past but that's just siguro one once lang out of the entire history of Coca-Cola. No? They have learned from there and their marketing strategy is always superb. No? So, dito, no, uh, they have used the as the help of the crowd. Okay? So, genuinely, nakita nila, no, nakuha ng mga tao yung Coca, uh, Coke in can, eh, natuwa sila. No? Na parang, lalo na couples yung nakakuha. So, literally, love is in the air. No? Parang, they get to share the coke, mupo sila, tapos nabigyan pa ng balloons yung girl. No? So, uh, it's a really good um, activity, no? Uh, and it, it is a form of crowdsourcing. Is, is there really love and happiness in the air, no? So, ang ganda ng kanilang experiment. And that is a form of crowdsourcing, no? Another form of crowdsourcing is uh, what companies do. Like, for example, Pepsi companies Lays. Yung Lays kasi under ng Pepsi company yan, eh. No? So, Again, ask your customers, no, what do you want? And then from there, you start your crowdsourcing. So ginawa nila, they have outsourced or crowdsourced their next batch of flavors. No? Kasi pwede tayong gumawa ng sarili nating flavor. We can think of, ikaw, ano bang paborito mo? No? Ah, paborito ko, pansit. No? Lace, pansit, flavor. Ganun ang ginawa mo. Ay, kasi Pilipino ko eh. Uh, gusto ko naman na uh, ganitong lasa, adobo, no? Lace adobo. Di ba may mga ganyang chips yung ginagawa nilang local na no? like yung kalimutan ko yung pangalan nito eh. Basta yung chicharon din dito na uh, chicheria, no? Puro local ang kanyang uh, flavor. Yung boy bawang, ganun din, no? Marami siyang mga local uh, touch. Okay? O local taste. So dito, what they did is Lace no, conducted this do as a flavor no, instead of, uh, yes, uh, Gia. Sir, asking lang po, sir. Ano po, sir, yung ano, disadvantage ng crowdsourcing, sir? Kasi parang kung ako, sir, magtatay ng isang business, tas I'm asking, sir, yung mga customer. Parang wala na, sir, excitement yung mga customer. Kasi, sir, parang sila na magbibigay ng mga opinions. Yes, that's a, that is a good point, ano, uh, Gia. That is um, a valid uh, point, ano. Um, in any endeavor naman, there is always an advantage and disadvantage, you know? There is risk. And in risks, meron tayong tinatawag na calculated risk. So, syempre, na foresee na nila yan. So, pwede mong sabihin na walang excitement, no? However, um, they, they have also weighed in the advantages, no? So if we ask people kung ano ba yung gusto nila, bibili nila yan kasi yan yung gusto nila eh. No? So let's say yes, nawala yung element of excitement, nabawasan yung element of excitement, but you have asked for it. No? So ikaw ang bibili niya kasi yun pala yung gusto mo eh. Rather than creating something na wala namang may gusto. No? Kunwari, ikaw ang may-ari, tapos ang gusto mo ay jalapeno na flavor. Ikaw lang ang may gusto nun. Eh, yung mga tao, hindi pala niya, ay, ayoko niya, sobrang anghang. Or hindi yun yung taste ng crowd. Right? 
um, kasi this is GBA, ano? GBA2. Pagka nag-third year kayo and then when you take on marketing, mas mauunawaan ninyo no, yung um, concept of involving the customers no, or giving them a voice. No? Yung crowdsourcing is a form of giving your stakeholders or your customers a voice. No? So, kung mara kayo yung gumawa nitong flavor na to, syempre proud kayo dyan at saka you will become a loyalist of the brand dahil for once, narinig kayo at saka, ay, pinakinggan tayo. Ito yung binoto natin na, na gusto nating flavor. Right? So, th- while that is true, no, may mga advantages and disadvantages talaga in any form of activity. Wala namang absolute na 100%. Wala kang risk, no? At walang, um, uh, walang disadvantage. Everything meron yan, pros and cons. So, however, when they did this, it was successful for them. Mas naging mas maganda for them, no? Nung ginawa nila 'yan, yung mga flavors na 'yan, chicken and waffles, cheesy garlic bread, it was a success for PepsiCo, no? So it's a form of crowdsourcing kasi they have asked, no, naggawa sila ng campaign do as a flavor and then from there, ito yung mga parang cumulatively gustong gawin ng tao nagawa ng flavor and then from there ginawa nila ng flavors now they have offered three new offerings based from the survey no kung ano ba yung gusto ng mga tao yan okay so yun yung part ng crowdsourcing next we have onshoring okay pag sinabi mo onshoring same shore yan ano or Vendor in the same home country as the client. So, kung saan yung client, doon din dadalhin yung outsourcing activity. So, not necessarily ibang bansa. In this case, when you say onshore, para yung bansa. Pero ang kukunin mong third party or partner company will be kapareho mo ng country. Kaya nga onshore, eh, pareho kayo ng lugar. But nilalabas nyo lang yung activity na yon Like one, for example, accounting. Hindi naman tayo sa line ng accounting, no? kuwari IT business tayo. So nilabas natin yung um, kumuha tayo ng company who will do the accounting side of our business for us. That's an example of onshoring. No? Basta within the same country. So, yan. Kagaya na nasabi ko kanina, no? lahat naman may advantages and disadvantages. No? So, advantages, it allows immediate response. Product, dis- kasi maganda kapag ka magkapareho na kayo ng lugar, no? mas mabilis. You can meet them in person. You are in the same time zone, so wala kang worry na umaga dyan, gabi dito, so on and so forth. No? Wala ka rin magiging problem sa com- communication kasi pareho kayo ng country. Right? Product designers in same country respond to market feedback quickly. Mas mabilis silang maka-respond. No? Local contractors have same market knowledge. So, if they would need to tweak or edit, hindi ka na mahirapan kasi kapareho mo siya ng ano eh, perspective. Kuhare, Pilipino sa Pilipino. Mas mauunawaan niya kung ano ba yung needs ng Filipino customer or ano ba yung wants ng Filipino customer kasi pareho kayo ng culture, ng language, communication style, knowledge, right? So yun yung advantage ng onshoring to local contractors. Okay? Makakapag-improvise sila at saka mas nauunawaan nila yung context, no yung lugar. So, examples of onshoring uh, strategies done by companies worldwide, like for example, itong Caterpillar. So, alam natin yung Caterpillar, no? trucking uh, business yan. Tapos, meron din, nag-expand din sila dun sa shoes. Di ba, meron tayo yung mga shoes na Caterpillar. Ganun ang gusto ko eh, yung parang Timberland, ano? kasi ang haba ng buhay nun. Meron akong Timberland na sapatos. Medyo mahal lang siya, no? Pero, kailan ko ba binili yun? 2009? Anong year na ngayon, ano? It's already 2022. Buhay pa rin siya. Ang naging problem lang nun is yung soul na baklas. 
pinatahi ko lang no pero up until now ginagamit ko pa rin siya so yan and ang ginawa ng caterpillar they have onshored ano a portion of their manufacturing from Mexico magkalapit na yan ha Texas to Mexico mas pinalapit pa niya no Pinala, pinapasok niya from the border no so Mexico to Texas creating new 200 jobs. So, minsan yung onshoring ay another move to promote corporate social responsibility. Familiar ba kayo doon sa concept ng CSR? Napag-aralan nyo na ba siya? Di pa po, sir. Ah, okay. Pag sinabi mo, oh, yun yung iba, alam nila. No? Pag sinabi mo kasi corporate social responsibility, no? you feel a sense of responsibility to your community. So, in this essence, no, ang gusto kasi mangyari ng Caterpillar ay maibalik yung ibang trabaho sa US. Kasi worldwide naman yung, ano, no? worldwide yung kawalan ng trabaho. Di ba nga, recently, no? makikita nyo sa news. Ang dami daw Filipino, walang trabaho, parang 4.5 million, parang umangat siya. So given that there is a pandemic, no, kaya mas lalong tataas yan, uh, if we would put it in the same context, gusto din ng Caterpillar, makatulong sila sa mga kapwa nila Americans. So what they did is they relocated their jobs. So instead na Mexico ang gagawa, dito muna tayo sa kapwa natin mga Amerikano. So, yeah, that's good, ano? Um, corporate social responsibility yan, apart from siguro gusto mo makatipid, mas malapit, saka nabanggit nga natin kanina, may advantages din siya, di ba? So, uh, another example will be Walmart. Ganon din ang aim nila, no? To produce more American jobs. Uh, committed to purchasing $250 billion worth of American products. So, ginawa nila... Um, bibili natin yung sarili nating atin, locally made. No? Filipinos kasi, di ba, we have this um, meron tayong culture na gusto natin imported. No? I'm not sure kung ganun din sa ibang bansa no, na gusto nila imported or mas gusto nila yung imported rather than local. Pero sa US, what they did no, to address that is sinuportahan nila yung mga local um, manufacturers, no? locally made products. Yun yung binili nila. And in that essence, nakatulog sila sa mga workers doon. It has created more American jobs. So, totoo naman yun, eh, no? rather than ba, let's say buying face mask from China, kung merong kayang gumawa dito, tapos maganda rin naman quality, why not buy face mask created in the Philippines, no? Bili natin yung sa kapwa natin. Di ba meron nga tayo pag when you check on Facebook, support your friends doing business. Kung yung friend mo, naggawa siya ng business niya, huwag mo nang tawaran. Ano? Huwag ka nang mag, um, what do you call this, babaratin mo pa. Kapwa mo na nga yan. Eh, no? Kabansa mo yan. Ano? Kapwa mo Pilipino yan. And that is what Walmart and um, Caterpillar has done to support Americans no? who have lost their jobs produce more jobs. No? So, yung onshoring, again, may mga advantages and disadvantages dyan. More than, of course, CSR, gusto mo rin syempre yung kumita. No? Kaya, ganun din ang, yun din naman ang ano nun eh, pinakang main gist. No? So, yan. Ito rin, may disadvantages, no? kagaya na nabanggit ni Gia kanina. So, Ang um, onshoring, may disadvantages din. No? Risk of inadequately selected trained supervised staff. So, syempre, kapag ka onshore ka, local, mas konti yung options mo for highly qualified people. Okay? Whereas kung mas malawak, let's say, worldwide, of course, mas makakapili ka. Kasi ito, mas ninarrow down mo yung selection mo. Eh. Mas konti na lang sila. Okay? So, of course, there is a risk of inadequately selected trained supervised staff. And, Kaya mas mababa yung skill kasi, mas mababa yung pay mo. Anytime naman na may pinili kang 
um, what to call this, outsourcing activity. Again, di ba ang bottom line yan ay para makatipid? Di ba pinag-aralan natin yan sa reasons for outsourcing? Gusto natin makatipid? No? Kung mag-move ka in onshore, gusto mo pa rin makatipid. No? Siguro mas nagmahal yung sa competitive uh, provider sa ibang bansa. So dito na lang natin, no? dinala na lang nila ulit at home. No? Risk of higher attrition. Okay? Uh, lower business acumen, process knowledge than internal staff. Less motivation to deliver quality. So, mas, dahil nga mas mababa, pwedeng mas mababa yung kanilang motivation to deliver quality kasi mas mababa yung pay nila. Connected lahat yan. Anyway, pay, motivation. Siyempre, kahit sino naman, pag binigyan mo ng mas maraming pera, mas ganado magtrabaho. Tama ba? Kaya nga maraming tao ang lumilipat ng mga trabaho eh. Kasi itong trabaho na to mas malaki yung bayan. No? Therefore, if there's lower pay, there's, le there's less motivation, then there's risk of higher attrition. Mas parami ang magre-resign. Hanap sila ng ibang trabaho na mas malaki yung bayan. Okay? Example, New York Bank Contracting Startup Security Service Firm in New York. So, pwedeng yung mga taga New York na security service, mas mababa yung quality nila. Kasi mababa lang yung pay, tapos hindi sila super motivated, no? Yun. So, hindi naman natin sinasabing absolute yan, ano? But it could happen. Okay, that could be a disadvantage when you onshore. Next, we have nearshoring, or the transfer of business to a nearby country. So, ito naman, kung yung onshoring is on the same country, this one is to a nearby country. So, kunwari, no? Japan, tapos dati ang kanyang outsourcing partner ay US, dinala niya sa Asia, no? Pinutol niya yung sa US, dadalin ko sa Asia. So, mas malapit, kapitbahay na bansa mo na lang. No? Yun yung nearshoring. Uh, transfer of business to a nearby country, sharing the same border. So, yan. Advantages, the fee for service, variability, uh, rather than fixed compensation cost. So, pwede yung parang uh, per project na lang ang bayaran mo kasi kapag ka mas malayo yung, yung outsourcing partner, mas mahaba yung mga contracts niya. Eh. Kasi, syempre, ang costly na para i-establish yung contract na yun, tapos puputulin mo lang anytime. Whereas kung mas malapit, mas malaki yung chance na pwede mong iper project basis no or i-cut down yung terms of contract into shorter ones. Okay? Significant labor cost arbitrage. So mas mababa yung labor cost mo, no? Kasi near shore na yan eh, mas malapit yan sa yo, no? So you can offer much cheaper or mas mababang labor uh, rates. Okay? Example is Toyota Motors, no? Japanese automotive manufacturer selling its products in different parts of the world. So alam naman natin, Toyota, alam natin kung gaano kaganda ang quality ng Toyota. Even in the US, marami doon Toyota cars. Uh, marami sa kanila ang, um, what do you call this? Loyal. No, uh, to the brand of Toyota. Kasi Toyota has proven their uh, quality. No? Kaya nga meron tayo, di ba sa business, may pinag-aaralan tayo na Toyota Way. Ewan ko lang kung naituro na yun sa inyo, no? the Toyota Way. Kasi the Toyota Way is the best way for manufacturing. No? Kumbaga sila yung unang naka-establish ng pinakamabilis, pinaka-efficient, Zero to minimal errors when it comes to uh, large-scale manufacturing or automotive production. Okay? Kaya world-renowned ang brand ng Toyota. Alam mo na, when you buy Toyota, you are buying quality. Kaya nga marami, di ba, dito sa Pilipinas, ang Mitsubishi, Toyota, kasi alam nila na mahaba, mahaba talaga ang buhay ng sasakyan. No? 
because of good quality. So, Toyota, what they did is they nearshored their production to Thailand in 1996. So, actually, matagal na yun, ano? Dati, they have uh, outsourced their production in some larger and farther parts of the world. But they have decided na dalhin siya sa Thailand. So, malamang, bago naman nila gawin yan, they have researched, check kung meron ba mga legal fees, ano ba yung mga restrictions, ano ba yung pros and cons, if we will nearshore. And then, of course, they have arrived at a good conclusion na mas makakabuti sa company na in-nearshore yung operations. Parang ano yan eh, no? for example, um, nagpagawa ka ng, uh, nagpatahi ka ng damit, ano? Siyempre, mas mafe-feel mong mas secured ka kung yung pagpapatayian mo, yung malapit lang, no? Like, kunwari, sa palengke lang, konting lakad lang, no? Versus sa, kunwari, nagpatayi ka pa sa malayong lugar, no? Sa San Jose, uh, SM San Jose, mamamasahe ka pa, no? Ang dami mo pang kailangan gawin, oras, preparation para makapunta doon. Whereas yung malapit, no? Anytime, pwede mong i-check, right? Yun naman yung isa sa mga reasons, eh. Bukod sa cost, you can check it anytime. Pwede mong puntahan. Tandaan nyo, anong 1996, hindi pa ganun kalaganap yung internet, no? So when they have decided to do that, makikita mo kung paano gagawin. Yes, that's correct, ano? Malapit lang kasi siya, eh. O yun, by, by recommendations, no? Or um, merong nagsuggest sa'yo, no? So of course, kahit sa bagay naman ano, ilalagay mo lang siya sa um, human nature. Mas gusto mo yung mas malapit, di ba? Kahit nga sa ano eh, usapang uh, love or relationship, di ba? The the meat nearest to the bone is the sweetest, di ba? Sabi nga nila ano. Kung ano yung mas malapit, kung sino mas malapit, yun yung nagkaka-developan, di ba? <laughs> sa totoong buhay lang ano. Eh kasi eh, yun naman yung reality, no? May, ang tao, meron siyang, gusto niya ma-feel yung security. Ganun din sa business, no? You wanted to feel secure. That's why you move the operations nearby para anytime, pwede mong i-check, no? Kunwari, yung mga executives ng Toyota, they have decided na, okay, mag-random visit tayo. Unannounced, no? Walang alam yung Toyota Thailand na bibisita tayo, mga executives. One day, they just show up para makita kung ano yung ginagawa ng mga tao. It's feasible versus sa ah, pupunta ka pa ng US. No? Mas malayo yon, mas mahabang preparation. Tapos parang manggugulat ka lang, ah, kaya ka ng pera nun, di ba? Hindi, hindi siya practical, right? So, ganun yun. Ano? Yun yung nearshoring. So, with that, marami na rin sumunod sa kanya ng mga uh, car brands na nasa Asia. Naglipatan na sila lahat sa Thailand. No? Mitsubishi, Honda, Suzuki Motors, Tata, no? Alam ko itong Tata sa ano to eh, parang hindi ko alam kung sa Kia ba 'yan, I'm not sure. Pero more on van yung mga car units nila, you no? Know? Or yung automobile, uh, automobile units nila. Near shore to Thailand. So, ang Thailand ngayon has become um a destination and destination for car manufacturing outsourcing. Okay? So, ayan. I hope naintindihan niyo yung concept of nearshoring. So, as always, meron din siyang disadvantage. So, lahat naman, ano, again, may risk, rewards. Advantages, disadvantages. Pros, cons. Okay? Disadvantage, additional coordination cost. So, syempre, dahil malapit yan, mas frequent, meron ng additional coordination ko. So, maya't maya, mag-check ka. Kasi malapit eh. Kung baga parang yun yung negative implication niya. Dahil mas malapit, maya't maya ka natatawag or pupunta. No? And it would involve coordination cost. Sourcing management, communications. Yan. Transfer pricing tax margin requirements. So, I, I think itong tax requirements naman, whether near shore or malayo offshore ay required naman siya no? so hong kong retail firm offshoring garments manufacturing in manila so yan ano 
So, may mga advantages and disadvantages talaga lahat. No? Ka, um, I don't know if you have seen the news. Di ba, meron uh, na harang or na, com- na confiscate na 5 million worth of apparel. Hindi ko alam kung sa Baguio man. Basta there's a news eh, na nakita ko siya, na daanan ko siya sa Facebook nito nakaraan. Yung mga pang ukay-ukay. Na yung pang UK-UK na tinatawag natin. So, bakit kinonfiscate yun? Ano bang, wala naman drugs yun ah. No? Ano, bang, ano bang problema doon? Sino ang naaapektuhan? So, ang naaapektuhan ay yung mga branded clothing, branded cloth businesses nearby. No? Kaya sila yung naglalagay ng mga ganong restrictions. So, if you would put that in the uh, perspective of, kunwari, ikaw ay car manufacturer in Thailand. Tapos nakita mo, naglipatan na lahat ng mga outsourcing. Nag-outsource na lahat. Toyota, Mitsubishi, no? etc. sa Thailand. What does that mean for you? Mas konti yung qualified na people, skilled and qualified people kasi kinuha na ng ibang mga companies eh. Tsaka baka mas malaki yung compensation nila versus sa akin na taga dito lang, di ba? Yan. So yan yung mga advantages and disadvantages. Ano? You just have to weigh in. No? Pipiliin mo lang kung ano yung makakabuti sa business overall. And then of course, yung offshoring, yan yung alam natin, ano? outsourcing, offshoring, in different countries. Ito na yung malayo. No? Allows a company to focus on core business, fast ramp up, ramp down at reasonable cost, opportunity to expand into new areas cost effectively. So, disadvantage, data privacy, totoo naman yan. Ano? And issue yan ngayon sa karamihan ng mga companies. No? Just like um, US banning Huawei because of data privacy, kasi Huawei is from China. Lack of right business acumen, right market. So, siyempre, dahil mag-contrasting cultures yan eh. Asian culture, Western culture. So, meron silang disconnect. Cultural differences leading to delays and miscues. Parang kunwari, no? Western culture, medyo laid back lang sila, hindi sila nagmamadali, no? Ito namang uh, vendor or let's say ang owner ay Asian, gusto niya mabilis, gawa kagad, tapos parang may tamang hinala palagi, mayat maya tumatawag, nag-check, no? Cultural differences yun eh. No? Risk of high attrition in service provider. So pwede pa rin mataas ang attrition. Weak staff selection and training. So yun yung mga advantages and disadvantages. No? So, yeah, we're done. Ano? Here is your assignment. Okay? So, we search articles of examples of strategies uh, in outsourcing. Yung nabanggit natin, ano? nearshoring, offshoring, onshoring, crowdsourcing. Okay? Um, and how it has posit- positively affected the business. Okay? So uh, let me stop the recording.